Hi, my name is Kelly Chappelle, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to visualize data using ggplot2. This video was made for Bio47, which is Introduction to Research in Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, and this presentation was modified from one that I saw produced by Kenneth Tay for STATS32, which I took at Stanford in fall of 2017. So in ggplot2, there are three key elements of a graphic. There's the data, which is the data set that we're using for the plot. For example, our MIM data data frame that I've shown you in other examples. So remember the data frames will have rows and columns. Uh, the next part is the aesthetics, which are the coordinate system or which columns will be on the X and Y axis. So you could grab, for example, F on the X axis and A on the Y axis. And finally, the geometry or the geome. And that's what kind of plot you'll make. For example, a box plot or a scatter plot. So once you have the data and you have a coordinate system, you can tell a ggplot what kind of plot to make. So in this case, it's making a scatter plot. So the general structure is you call the function ggplot, you tell it what data to input, and then which x and y in the aesthetics. So that's this. Then you can add these layers with a bunch of different additional things. For example, plus geom point that says make a scatter plot with the aesthetic for the scatter plot being coloring the points by the column cylinder, the values that are in the column cylinder. Then you can add geom smooth, method LM, which will add a regression line, and you can change a bunch of different other things as well, which I'll be going through. But this general structure, ggplot, defining the data, defining the aesthetics, and defining a geom uh, are the key components of making a figure in ggplot2. Now you can find a really nice ggplot2 cheat sheet shown here, and what I really like about this is it goes through the key grammar of graphics, which we call, which is what we call the combination, the components, the data set, the geom, and the, uh, and the coordinate system or the aesthetic. But it also shows what kind of plots you can use depending on what kind of variables you have, such as two continuous variables, a continuous and discrete variable, two discrete variables, visualizing error, and a variety of other things. So you can go to this link and that will take you to the ggplot cheat sheet. So I'm going to go back to the R markdown file that we've been going through a lot. And in the data visualization section is the region of the markdown file that I'm going to show you how to make a couple different plots. So I was just recapitulating the different parts of a, of a grammar of the graphic, the elements of a graphic. And I'm going to do two different worked examples here, a box plot and a scatter plot. So starting with the box plot, if we want to make a box plot that compares the columns nectar microliter, um, it's a dependent variable and stigma as an independent variable. And just to remind you, here's our MIM data frame. So if we want to predict um, based on the stigma, either open, closed, or NA, what the nectar volume is going to be, we can do that. So what this does is it says call ggplot, have the data be MIM data, and then on the aesthetics, on the X have it be stigma, and on the Y have it be nectar microliters. And give me a box plot. Now you don't always remember what the geoms are, what the names of the geoms are, so that's why it's really useful to look back at this cheat sheet. You can say, ah, yes, geom box plot. That's how I make a box plot. So when I run this, well, essentially what this does is it makes the plot, it stores it in the object. I'm calling box plot, and then it calls box plot. You can see that it makes this very simple box plot. Now, you might know if you're taking our class that this box plot would not give you a good grade on an assignment because the axes are not descriptive and it lacks a title. So how do we do that? Here are how we can add a couple options onto our basic plot. The first is we can add titles on the X, Y, and the title by adding these functions. Xlab, you can type in what you want on the X axis, Ylab, what you want on the Y axis, and then ggtitle, the name of the plot. And so when I add all these things, you can see comparing the two plots, right? Now I have stigma status label on the X, nectar volume on the Y, and I've got a nice title here. Now, what if I want to have different colors between the different box plots so it's very clear to see the different stigma statuses? So what I can do is I can add aesthetic color equals stigma, and it'll color the box plots based on the values that are in the stigma column. So you can see that I've got different values here if the stigma is open versus closed. Now, you may have seen in previous lectures that one thing that's really nice about um, 
uh, one thing that we can do is show the underlying distribution of the data by actually plotting the individual data points. So again, the data that made up these box plots are uh, different flower observations. So what I can do is I can add the original data points on top by adding a layer, in this case, geom jitter. So geom jitter, you can see uh, here, geom jitter, it plots individual points. And I want to add this aesthetic, which creates some opacity of the points. They're a little bit see-through. So when I add geom jitter, you can see I've got my underlying box plot, but I've got points on top of it as well. Now, if you're anything like me, the NA column is very annoying because this is not giving us any information really about our data. So I want to get rid of the NAs, but I can't do that in, in ggplot alone. This is where I'm going to use uh, dplyr. So just like I showed you in the previous dplyr video, you can use filter is not NA on the stigma column to remove all of the NAs from the data frame in the stigma column. And I'm saving that as a new uh, data frame called mim data filtered. So the input for this ggplot is that new data frame mim data filtered. Everything is the same though. So what I, I want is I want this plot to be essentially the same as this plot, just without the NAs. And so when I run that, you can see that it indeed is just like that plot without the NAs. And I can also change the theme. So here I just added this line theme dark, and you can change the look of the different plots. So you can see this is a different plot. And this link will take you to uh, where you can look at all the different themes. So just to show you that, uh, let's see here. I'm just going to pull that up here for you. So you can see here are the different themes. So you can have different theme plots based on um, kind of what aesthetic you like. And you can also download other, thought, other themes um, in different packages in R as well. So now I'm going to move on and show you how to make a scatter plot. So uh, let's say I want to make a scatter plot of our log transform bacterial CFU column that we created above. So in the MIM data folder, that's this one, log bacterial CFU per microliter. And I want to regress that against nectar pH. So to make that basic scatter plot, again, we're going to call the ggplot function. We're going to say our data is MIM data. We're going to say our x is that log bacterial CFU per microliter column, and our y is nectar pH. And we're going to do a scatter plot, so I'm going to call geom jitter here. And I'm going to save that as the object scatter plot. I'm going to call scatter plot again, and we'll get a plot like this, where we've got log bacterial CFU per microliter and nectar pH. We can also add some extra details, so you can change the axis titles of X and Y and add a title, just like that. We can also add a trend line. So that's what this line is, geom smooth method equals LM. So just like uh, we learned before in this class, the, you can use the LM function where the syntax is y tilde x in order to do a linear regression. So this just says do LM and use my same x and y that I defined up here. So there we go. There's our regression line with our confidence intervals. Now, let's say that I am interested in the relationship between nectar pH, and I'm curious if stigma status is related. So I can color the points by stigma. So I'm running the exact same thing, but in geom jitter, I'm saying add the aesthetic color equals stigma. So color the points by what's in the stigma column. So here you can see it's the exact same plot, but the points are colored by if the stigma is open or closed. And so this is actually really interesting because um, you might wonder, OK, is the relationship between nectar pH and bacterial density dependent on if the stigma is open or closed? And one thing that I'm noticing here is here when there is no bacteria, generally the looks like again, like I'm, I, it's a statistics by eye, <laughs> but generally it looks like the nectar pH is a little bit higher. And it seems like generally there are more flowers with open stigmas. And that makes sense because when the stigma is open, it means the, the plant has not yet been pollinated. So there's probably not any, any microbes or bacteria there. And if there's not bacteria there, then the nectar is probably, uh, the, the, there's no bacteria to lower the pH. So that's why it would have on average a higher pH. So that's pretty interesting. So if I wanted to know if the trend, though, overall was different between the open and closed stigmas, you can also plot that. So instead of having color in geom jitter, like we did here, aesthetic color stigma geom jitter, you can have it be overall for everything. So this aesthetic would apply to both geom jitter as well as the trend line. So what this is going to do is create a plot that has two separate trend lines, one for each 
uh, stigma open, one for stigma closed. And so looking at this, you might say, okay, it looks like there might be a slight difference in slope, but they're pretty much overlapping. So I'm not sure, I mean, you'd have to do the exact statistics, but this might highlight the fact that there's no big difference in relationship between bacterial density and nectar pH, whether the stigma is open or closed. But uh, let's say that there was a big difference in slope, but I really wanted to highlight that. This might not be the easiest way to do that because they're kind of all overlapping. So let's say that I wanted to make two separate plots, one that just shows the points with the open stigma and one that just shows the points with the closed stigma. So to do that, you can use this facet grid function, which uh, will essentially create two different graphs or two different plots based on this value stigma, either open or closed. So when I run that, you can see that I've got two different plots here, one for stigma closed, one for stigma open, and that more clearly shows, depending on, again, what you want to show, maybe the differences here. So these are two different ways to add an additional variable, um, and you should think carefully about what you want the reader to take away from it to decide which uh, visualization approach would be most effective. Now again, you can change the theme. So if I wanted to change the theme to theme dark, just like we could with the box plot, we can do that here. So faceting and paneling. So as I showed you in the previous example, you can use facet grid in order to facet multiple plots. And something that's quite useful in our Bio47 data sets are the three pollinator exclusion treatments that we have available. So remember, we have these, um, we have plants that are exposed. We have plants that we put a cage around that we prevented large pollinators like birds from being able to pollinate and flowers that were individually bagged, which we think prevents all pollination. So in our MIM data set, remember that we uh, essentially define what category it's in by having a column that's bagged, having a column that's caged, and no column that's exposed. So if a flower is exposed, it would be false bagged, false caged, and therefore it would be exposed. But in order to use these fasting approaches, we need to have one column that has the different factors listed. So what I did was I added a new column here using the mutate function, and the mutate function is in dplyr. And in the previous video, I showed you how to use mutate in dplyr. But essentially what this does, is it creates a new column called treatment that if a in the column called treatment, it will say exposed if the bagged column is false and the caged column is false. It'll say caged if the bagged column is false, but the caged column is true. And if it's not either of those two, then it'll say bagged. So when I run this, it adds a new column to MIM data called treatment that has either bagged, caged, or exposed. Now I can use that column to box to create a, a faceted box plot by treatment by adding to our regular box plot code this treatment line. So just to remind you, our regular box plot looks something like this. What we want is we want three separate groups of box plots, one for bagged, caged, and exposed. So this should do that. And you can see, again, we've got our three different box plots, bagged, caged, exposed. Now, let's say that we wanted to show both of these two plots, the box plot and the scatter plot. I'm just going to change this back to theme classic to match the other one. And I wanted to have a panel, and I wanted to have a panel plot where one was panel A and the other one was panel B. We can do that by using the calplot package. So at the beginning of this R markdown file, I had install calplot. And the function in the calplot package I want to use is plot grid. So what plot grid will do is you'll put the name of the two plots. So I'll put scatter plot, box plot, and then you can say what labels you want. Label, so I'm going to label the first one A and the second one B. And what it will do is create a plot that has both of them side by side. So what if I want to actually take one of these plots and put it into a document? What I can do is I can take the name of the plot and type it into the terminal. And what it will do is it'll pull it up in plots. You can go to export, either save as PDF, save as image, but my favorite is copy to clipboard. So you can use this nice function to kind of resize the plot how you like it with text that seems like the right size. This looks pretty good. I can write copy plot. And then if I have, um, I don't know what I can show you. So if I have Microsoft Word up here, I'm just gonna pull up Word. Um, and I have my manuscript. Uh, let's see here, let me go to my desktop here. 
got Microsoft Word, I can just paste in that plot and there it is. So hopefully this video was useful in learning how to make uh, ggplots and there's many, many more things you can do in ggplot which you can check out in this cheat sheet or just doing some Googling online. But hopefully this gives you the basics of everything that you need to know to make some pretty nice looking plots for your class project.